Hey, what's up everyone, Jeremy here, and today we're going to talk about variables in computer programming, which are pretty similar to the ones that you grew up learning about um, back in the day when you were in school, but these are applied to certain kinds of equations inside of a computer program. You know, for instance, if you wanted to ask a user to put in their name or put in some kind of information, you would have to have a variable to collect that, to hold that temporarily. But that's getting a little ahead of ourselves. So let's back it up to the beginning. And even if you don't know what an equation is, you can understand variables and I'm going to try to break it down so people that don't know what an equation is at all can understand it. All right, so when we look at a variable, what we're actually seeing is pretty much just a bucket, a holding tank. But let's stick with bucket. There are different kinds of buckets when it comes to computer programming. Some can hold many kinds of objects, you know, many different kinds of objects. Some can hold only one kind of an object and only just one of that object. It's important to learn the differences and how variables can be used, but just to keep it kind of simple real quick, I'm only going to explain the basic concepts of what a variable is. There are many different kinds of variables, and I'm going to go over some of the main ones. So anytime you see boolean or bool, this pretty much is just saying true or false. You know, if something is true or false, that would be stored in a boolean value, and integer is any kind of a number or a single digit. So 187, 6,708, you know, any, any, I just, yeah, I, I can't read right now. 67,867, any number that you put in there would be an integer. However, once you get to decimal points, that would not be a valid integer, or even that wouldn't be a valid integer. That would actually be what's known as a float. But if you just put that into integer, it wouldn't work. Um, all right, so char is anything that is just a single letter or character. So that would be considered a char, a character, you know, any, any character, a char, character, self-explanatory, but it only can be one. This is not a char. Uh, it, sounds, it sounds weird saying that so many times. All right, let's move on. So an important concept to think about also when it comes to variables is that it represents what it holds pretty much. So <clears throat> at least that's a good way to look at it, excuse me. It represents what it holds. So if I have a variable and it's gonna hold a person's name or something, that variable would most likely be, you know, first name, last name, full name, whatever the variable name would be. So I could identify that variable in itself. An example would be using, actually I missed one. So string would be a useful, uh, that's a very popular, variable I did not mention. And that's if you wanted to write a word or something. So dog and cat or just dog or any kind of variation of words is going to be in a string. So let's just say I wanted to declare my name in it and say my name equals a variable so I can put my name into a variable. What I would need to do is do something like using the string and then let's say first name. So first name and we would actually, we would just use the equal sign, which is used to declare a variable. But what if we wanted to compare something or say, ask if something was equal to something? Well, in this example, we used up here, x plus two equals five. We are doing that, but we're not doing it in the correct format if we wanted to do it in programming. We would use actually two equal signs, which looks bizarre to some people I know, but x plus two is the same as five, but X would need to be equal already to five or to three. So X would be set to three before that. However, this would be the necessary format in order to get such an operation, okay? And I, that might be a little wonky to understand, but that's totally fine. You're gonna understand it when you work with this a little bit more. So down here, I have this little freak show of an operation going on which isn't an actual operation, but I'm just trying to show you the differences between this and this and what they mean. And for the record, when you see exclamation equals, that means not equal, it's not the same. X equals 10 is not the same kind of an operation as X equals equals 10, or more accurately, X comparing to 10. What these are actually saying pretty much is we're setting x to 10. So 
x is now 10. And then this is saying x is the same as 10. So now that you understand these operators, you should be able to understand probably what this is saying right here. Variables equals blah, 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 blah. This is actually the binary code for variables, like the word variables. Um, anyways, let's move on to the last little bit, which is pretty much I wanted to go over the important parts of a variable that you're going to need to learn on your own or check out some of my other videos that I will be making on some of these concepts. There are many different parts of a variable that you need to understand, and I'm not going to put them all in this video, but here are some of the more important things that you need to be aware of and look into. So parameters, arrays, so that's pretty much a variable that can hold many different data pieces. So there are actually variables that are called arrays that can hold different names, like a, a group of people's names, you know, the whole football team's names in a variable, or just their first names in a variable. Um, you can, it gets more complex when you get into objects, and it's the same concept pretty much. But uh, scope is the biggest thing that you need to worry about, and I even wrote it twice. Scope is pretty much the level in which a variable is accessible with inside the program. You want to be careful with this little word right here, scope, because it'll get you. And you have to be, it, it can cause security issues, it can cause websites to break. Scope is a, a big deal, and if you understand scope, well, you understand one part of variables, because there's many other important parts. But scope is one of those things that can get you without you knowing it. So by the time you do, you're kind of screwed. Certain programs are going to have variables that are accessible only to a very small part of the program, while others are available to the entire program. It's important to delegate which are allowed to access which parts of the program. And if you're not on top of this, uh, it can cause big issues, like it'll break your website or break the application, whatever the case it might be. That is pretty much a nutshell on variables, and it's. I, I was trying to keep this as universal as possible. I didn't want to lean more toward any kind of values within a certain one programming language, but the good thing is pretty much all programming languages follow the exact same kind of uh, concepts and constructs. I don't know why... I, that has to be a figure, a term somewhere, concepts and constructs. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, well, I hope you learned a little something, or else you just listened to me ramble for however long that was. But yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video.